Hello, this is Jeff Royal from G4 Geomatic Resources in Houston. And today we're going to quickly go over the Leica Prism offsets and third party Prism offsets in Captivate and some tips for accuracy. So we'll go over the different Prism offsets, the values, how to put in a third party Prism. Um, we'll quickly go over um, how we can change from reflectless to infrared and just show how that it maintains the proper offsets for you. And the same when you do your check back site routine, that's very handy for robotics. And we'll do a quick work style. Uh, if you want to go from a robotic with third party back site to traverse using circular prisms. And we'll just quickly touch on PPM settings and check and adjust and go over the accuracy of prisms and different instrument accuracy uh, over distances. And uh, quickly touch on a the GM H007 for vertical height measurements. Okay. So, um, it's, it's, this can't be confusing. Uh, Leica, we'll, we'll say this is Swiss algebra here. Leica originally came out to all their instruments. They had a Leica circular prism. And in the older variations, you'd see a, a prism offset of 0, 0.0. And in reality, they fixed that for the Leica circular prism. The reality is the absolute value of that prism was a negative 34.4. So, this can't be kind of confusing. So once again, if we came down and shot reflectless or to a target, the, the actual absolute value would be zero. But you'll see inside Captivate, the like of absolute constant, the like constant would be 34.4, okay? So a lot of times guys are asking, well, if I have a 30 millimeter third party prism, what do I type in? And there's two, uh, there's two fields we can enter, an absolute. We type in negative 30, which would then equate to a 4.4. So I have a, just a moving, I'll use this as a moving uh, schematic to compute that. Because sometimes we have guys that will create their own prisms and uh, they know what the, the actual offset is by measuring it. And they want to figure out what to type in the system to get the exact correct readings. So let's take a look at the different uh, prism offsets. So once again, if I used a like a round prism, uh, there's three variations. The 121 prism, it's actually a one millimeter prism, it's uh, $430. The GPR 111 is 255 with a target plate, it's a two mil. And these are all, once again, the Leica constant zero, the actual absolute constant is negative 34.4. When you select and captivate, you'll see the icon will change, you'll see that circular prism on the top. If I used to like a 360 prism, there's two variations, the GRZ4 and the 122. You can see the cost down here. The main difference is this 122 is a two mil all the way around. Uh, the GRZ4 is actually a two to five millimeter. We'll see a yellow, little yellow arrow here. So once again, if that was facing you, you'd have a clean face back to the instrument. So if you're on a traverse point or a boundary corner, this would get it that back down to two millimeters. But if you just walk around doing topo shots, it could be two to five, depending on where the where the robot's locked onto that that uh, prism array. Okay, and the GRZ122 is used for the smart poles, got the uh, five eight screw on the top as well. And once again, in Captivate, when you change to that prism, the icon will be reflected. You see the 360 icon. Now, if we define a third party um, 30 millimeter, once again, the absolute constant is negative 30, the like a constant is 4.4. In Captivate, you'll see the icon update. It'll be a person for user to find. These would be good for SECO prisms or mini prisms. Just be careful um, because this prism can unscrew. If you go on the other side, it's a zero offset. So just be careful that that's an, an error source. And what we found is when we're doing traversing, we can get good distance to some of these third party um, prisms, but over longer distances, sometimes if the glass is as not good of a quality, then you'll start seeing angular error. So if you are trying to chase millimeter accuracy in, in high precision work, we strongly recommend this for traversing to invest in the Leica circular prisms, okay? So let me just pull the, the uh, simulator up and we'll just show this real fast. If I come in here, uh, right now I can click on this icon and go to measure prism mode. And here we can quickly take a look at the targets. So right now I got a 30 millimeter. If you get a brand new system, this will not be typed in. I got to define it. So let me just delete this. And so there's a Leica 360 prism as a default. If I scroll down, here's a Leica round prism. So if I hit that, hit okay. Once again, the icon updates. I want to create a new one. I just hit targets. 
hit new, and if it wants to say 30 millimeter, and this is where I type in a negative 30 or 4.4. So you have a field for Leica or absolute. So if there's any concern, just type in your absolute constant, negative 30, hit store, hit OK, and once again, we're now updated. Now, if I switch, it's kind of neat. If, let's say I shoot in with a 30 millimeter prism. If I click on here and go to measure any surface or reflect this, it automatically changes. So I click on here, the target or prism offset is any surface, the absolute zero. So it's shooting right to that surface. And then once again, if I toggle back the prism mode, it picks the previous prism I had selected. So it's one less error source uh, when you switch from reflect this uh, to infrared. Okay. So it's just a neat feature. All right, let me just move the simulator over here. Oops. And now we'll get back on the presentation. So um, this is a schematic that's showing uh, different angular accuracies over certain distances. So a lot of people are asking, you know, how, how much more accurate is a one second in vertical compared to a three second compared to a five second? So this is a metric that you can see roughly 300 meters, thousand, uh, roughly a thousand feet. And we can start seeing that once we start getting around a thousand feet vertically, a three second is quite a bit more accurate than a five second. And once again, these are the accuracy. Uh, so one mil for the round prism, GRZ 122 is two millimeter. So this is just a really interesting schematic that some guys will refer to that can show the accuracy of your instrument over certain distances. Okay. Um, what we'll do is just come back to the uh, to the simulator, and um, what's really neat is I'll uh, hit my star key and have a work style, and I got one called Traverse and a T of 16 with 30 millimeter back sight. So let's, let's load this work style. And right now is considering we had a uh, robotic total station uh, using a 30 millimeter back sight. So if I came in and went to set up and I was gonna set up my instrument, hit okay. I pick my job, my station, my control point. And the newer instruments will have a button down here to measure the height. So the new instruments have an automatic height measurement, but you can use the uh, GMHM007 to take your height measurement. Uh, sometimes that's in metric, so once again, I can create a hotkey or hit the star key, and I got regional settings, and I can change from feet to meters. And uh, if I was using that, that height measuring device, I can then type in my value right there. In this case, if I hit star, set hotkeys, I've got a hotkey set under uh, function F7. So once again, I can just hit function F7. It's a quick way for using that to toggle between uh, feet and metric. So we'll hit OK, we we'll type in the right height of the instrument. And if I had the backside ID, I'll get the same. I can come here and, and convert from feet to meters if I was using the, uh, the height measuring device. Okay, so that's just a quick way to toggle from feet to meters. And um, when we are set up, you know, once again, if I, I, if I hit set orientation, hit OK, Right now we have a set where our backsight MC updates automatically. Our backsight is going to be that 30 millimeter prism, okay? And that up, updates automatically. So when I shoot the backsight, it takes that into account. They get the right distance to check, okay? Now if I was using a robot and I kept on working, if I was in the measure screen, I can hit function tools and there's an option called reset backsight. And what will happen is the robot will then turn to your backsight and um, in the simulator, it default 360, but in reality, it should, since it's set to 30 millimeter, it'll set, it'll be set to this. You can hit distance to check it to make sure everything's okay. And if you're within tolerance, you can reset your angle. So this reset back sight is very handy. So once again, it's under function tools, reset back sight number one. And it should, when it's set up, it should pull up the, uh, the prism for your back sight. The simulator is just, just off a little bit. So once again, if I came in here under my work style, if I hit settings, instrument, measure target, I have it set for 360 for my foresight. Once and fast, that'll be three millimeters, take a shot in half a second. And my setup would be my back sight, and that's where I set my 30 millimeter. And then once again, I can say with lock, once and fast, and hit OK. 
So if I switch my work style, if I was going to traverse and use the Leica circular prisms, once again, I get star work style. I create a new work style here called traverse. And in this case, if I went in and edited it, you'll see um, my first screen, I have a 30 millimeter. I, I could set that to have a Leica round prism for my foresight. And I'll use once, this will take a shot in two seconds with the one millimeter. Then my back site would be like a round prism. So once those are set, it'll update and use that circular prism. I can go through and store all my settings. And that's how I can edit, create a new work style if I was going to use that for traversing. And I'd be using the light like a circular prisms now for my back site and four sites to increase the accuracy. So I just want to go over that real fast on, on how to change your work styles. If I was going to change my PPM settings, once again, the temperature changed, I can hit settings. TS instrument, atmospheric corrections. And right now you can type in the temperature, pressure, and humidity. Right now I've got set to Fahrenheit inches. So if I hit star, we'll escape out of here. I want to change my settings. My star key, I will have regional settings. And in here, I can page over and um, you set your, once again, whatever information you want. But under others, I set mine to Fahrenheit and inches. So if you want to change that to Celsius, and uh, to metric, you can do that as well. But I'll, I'll just keep it on there, type in the atmospheric conditions, and that will help increase the accuracy if you're chasing millimeters for high precision work. Um, another thing, if you are like working the plant and you are chasing millimeter accuracy, is good. If the temperature changes more than 20 degrees, they recommend do a check and adjust. So once again, you hit settings, TS, come down to check and adjust. And it says needs to be, the instrument needs to be acclimatized. What I do, there's another video that goes over this, but real quick, what I'll do is I'll do this first. I'll we'll do check and adjust the compass here. This is the level button or the level screen. So just do two or three of these. The instrument will rotate around, jump the side of prism. After that's stored, then I'll come up here and do check and adjust on the compensator index line of sight. So I'll do the compensator first, make sure the level button is good. And then I'll do this second with two or three sets. Uh, just a quick tip that might help increase your accuracy. Okay. All right. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll just take a quick look at, we have a device here. So um, if you were trying to do real accurate vertical, uh, Leica makes what's called a GM, GHM 007 pipe measure device. It's in metric. So you pull this out. And you pull this little black lever out, and you can read, and it gives you a true vertical measurement. So what happens is uh, the GHT-196 snaps into the, the, the tri-brac. And if it's on the instrument, what's interesting is you're using a Leica back sight. It's the same height as the instrument. So this works for the instrument and your back sight. Just put it in, in the, the stand that doesn't have the bubble on it. Otherwise, it won't fit. And this little hook goes in here, slides on down. And you read any metric. So once again, if I was reading a metric, I use that hotkey to change. So once again, if I hit uh, function F7, my units would change from meters up here to feet. So that's a quick way to change it if you're if you're typing in uh, and using that metric device. And once again, that that device is uh, you know if you're using metrics a lot more accurate than uh, Imperial. Okay, so that device will snap on the tri -brack. This could be the instrument or the carrier. Uh, so again, here's the schematic. Uh, so the, actually the height of the prism, the center of the prism, is the exact height if I have my instrument. So we're doing force centering. As long as we're using the Leica tri uh, carriers and tri -bracks, I can snap the Leica prisms on here as a quick release. And that height, with using that, that height measuring device is the same for the instrument and the back side. So that's a really neat way when you pull that down, it's compensating for the uh, the tri brack to get the true vertical height measurement. Otherwise, if guys are using regular tapes, they got to take off three hundredths of a foot to compensate for the slope of that angle. So it's just uh, once again, it's just not a very expensive. You come back up here, it's just uh, you know sixty five dollars to have to add that to really increase the accuracy, especially if you're traversing using ATR to snap the center of the prism, use a Leica circular prism. 
And this device here will really increase the accuracy of your vertical uh, observations when you're traversing and doing sets of angles. Okay. So once again, there's some several different uh, carriers. You have them listed here. Uh, this is the basic one here. And here's one with an optical plummet. Uh, can you set over a point? So this would be if you're using a, a tri-brack that didn't have an optical plummet, and this one would be with a tri-brack with an optical plummet. You also make another one, this, uh, the 121 that has a, a, a laser uh, so you can set using the laser pulse. Okay. All right. So once again, that, that concludes the video. Hope you found it helpful. I know it can be a little bit confusing with different prism offsets. But at least now with Captivate, they put the absolute value in. So any concerns, just type in the absolute value for your prism offset, and that should maintain the accuracy of your observations. So once again, here's the G14 in Houston. It's myself, Jeff, John, Ronald in service, and Celia, the office manager. So if you have any help or need any help or assistance, here's our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us, and we're happy to help out. Thanks for listening. Hope you found it helpful.